In this video I'll be making some doors to hide the hot water tank in our bathroom and finishing up this project by making a kind of floor threshold type thing. I'm not sure what to call it. First I'm going to carefully measure up the opening and then I can rip my birch plywood to roughly the size of the opening. Although I deducted about 6mm from the measurement of the width of the opening to allow for a 2mm gap between the two doors and between the doors and the frame and about 4mm from the height of the opening to allow a 2mm gap at both the top and the bottom. I can make more refinements to the sizes later on by trimming off more material if necessary so it's better that the doors are slightly too big rather than slightly too small. Here I'm marking up locations of my hinges and I'm going to be using four hinges for each door as these doors are going to be floor to ceiling so quite tall and fairly heavy and by the way this plywood that I'm using is about 15 millimeters or 5 eighths of an inch thick. A speed square and a straight edge helps me to position the hinges consistently on each side. And then I can use the track saw to make a cut down the centre. I'm cutting with the front face of the doors face down to get the cleanest cuts possible as the blade cuts upwards. And using one piece of plywood like this and then cutting it into the two doors is going to give me a continuous grain pattern across the two doors which will be a nice feature. I can then mark up the location where I need to drill for the hinges. The hinges I bought are Euro style hinges and I chose these because they're going to give me the most adjustment for getting the doors square to the opening and also getting all of the gaps consistently spaced. And these are inset hinges rather than overlay hinges and that's because I want my doors to sit inside the opening flush with the frame rather than them sitting in front of the frame which is what the overlay style hinges are designed for. I got my hinges from Amazon, they came as a pack of 8, I'll leave a link to them below in the description box. They also came with a drilling guide but I don't know if it's just me but these things make no sense to me whatsoever so I didn't use that. Also it wasn't in English so that probably didn't help. What I found much more useful however is the diagram included on the item page on Amazon and from that I was able to determine that the centre of the hole for the cup of the hinges needed to be about 22mm from the edge. The cup is 35mm in diameter and if I divide that by 2 that's 17.5 and as the gap between the edge and the edge of the cup needs to be between 3 and 6mm I added 4.5mm to that number and that gives me 22mm. So after marking that up with my combination square I can then drill the holes using a 35mm force a bit. The diagram also said that I needed to drill to a minimum depth of 11.3mm and I had to be really careful here not to drill too far through as I didn't want the point of the bit to pierce through to the other side so I just crept up on it and kept offering up the hinges until they fitted. I can then mark up where the holes are, pierce the centre with an awl and screw them in. I didn't bother drilling pilot holes. So these doors are nothing fancy, we don't really like shaker style doors or anything like that, we prefer a more minimal look. And you can't really get much more minimal than fixing hinges to a piece of plywood. But they're going to look pretty good in our bathroom I think. Next it was on to finishing and I didn't get any footage of that because I've already covered it in a previous video in this series. Basically three coats of acrylic spray varnish, denibbed in between with 400 grit abrasive paper and then I can offer them up. And I immediately noticed that I'd probably need to trim off a little bit of material from the height of these doors in order for them to have enough clearance to clear the floor tiles. I used a piece of wood on the floor to place the door onto and that helped me to figure out how much material I needed to remove. I took about 5mm from the top of both doors using the track saw. I then secured the hinges inside the frame making sure that the face of the door was flush with the face of the frame. And that now cleared the floor nicely but as the ceiling wasn't perfectly flat it was rubbing on the ceiling a little when it was fully open. And after a bit of adjustment to the hinges it was looking good. So I've adjusted all of the hinges now. This style of hinges are great because they give you so much adjustment. This screw here enables you to pull the door outwards or inwards so that you can get it flush with the frame. And this screw here pulls the door either this way or that way. And that's so that you can get all of your gaps nice and consistent. These slots here also let you move the door up and down but I'm not going to use them in this instance. I can then offer up the second door and I put a few shims on the piece of wood to lift it up until it was level with the first door. 
and then I get that secured in place too. And after adjusting the hinges, it was looking pretty good. I found these nice knurled black handles on eBay and I can get those fitted. Then the bathroom inspector paid us a visit. I think he was satisfied. Just got this area down on the floor left to work on. This part over here is concrete and from here onwards is the old floorboards. And I was going to tile this originally and I have just enough tiles left to do that. But I've started thinking about making some kind of birch plywood threshold. I just think that might look nicer and frame it all off nicely rather than having some thin bits of tile. And I know you might be thinking, wood on a bathroom floor that's going to get wet from time to time, is that such a good idea? Well, A, we're not that splashy. B, yes, it might get mopped from time to time, but I don't think that will be an issue. And C, it'll have a few coats of varnish on it anyway, so it's not something I'm worried about. Okay, so I've basically been scribing and hacking away at this workpiece and it's almost a perfect fit now. However, my line of tiles isn't perfectly straight. So while it's seating in here perfectly well, at this end, it's about a millimeter or two off. So I'm just going to plane a little bit off at that end and hopefully it will slide right in. So this was a job that was a bit trickier than I'd expected, mainly due to nothing in the room being particularly square or level. I ended up using the track saw to trim it down I gave it three coats of water-based varnish. The floor height was the biggest problem. I'm using a piece of the same plywood here to get a sense of where the high and low spots are. I can simply add a few shims for the low spots and I just stuck those down with some builder's silicon. So I've added the shims to lift the plywood up to the right height over here and at this end too. But here in the middle where the concrete pad is I'm actually going to need to remove some material from the plywood. Here I'm marking up where material needs to be removed and I decided to make a little jig for the router to do this. I used hot glue to stick it to this long piece of MDF and set the cutting height to about two or three millimeters. And I can use this piece of MDF to reference from the face of the board and remove material where needed. Using hot glue for this probably wasn't the best idea though as it stuck to the base of the router a little bit too well, I had to chisel it off. Here I'm just removing some of the leftover ridges with a block plane. And then I do a dry fit and it looked good. I used some more builder's silicon to fix it down in place and it's also going to help fill any voids underneath. I can then refit the doors for the final time and the hinges came with these cover plates which just snap in place. I bought some coloured silicon to fill the void between the threshold and the frame and to be honest it wasn't very good stuff, it was very dry and seemed to set almost immediately and it wasn't a good colour match either. But after smoothing it out with a wet finger it didn't look too bad in the end. And the small gap between the tiles and threshold I added some clear silicon just to make sure that any water can't get down there. And that's it done. In fact, the whole bathroom is done now and we're absolutely over the moon with it. It's gone from being the ugliest room in the bungalow to being our favorite room. And if you want to see more videos about the bathroom renovation, you can get access to those via YouTube channel membership or Patreon, links down below in the description box. And if you sign up, you can also get early access to my videos, project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.